Hi there, Simon from SimonHoodsAid.com. I've got seven wines in front of me. Uh, common theme is Bordeaux grapes, but they are they all Southern Hemisphere? They are all Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I've got four from Australia, uh, and one each from Chile, New Zealand, and uh, Argentina. And uh, I've got them vaguely in vintage order, uh, youngest to oldest. Uh, but I'm starting with the, uh, what I think is going to be the lightest one, which is the New Zealand one, which is not quite the youngest, but uh, it's, uh, uh, this is 2012, the next one's going to be 2013. But anyway, the New Zealand one is Villa Maria, uh, Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon from Hawke's Bay at their private bin, and um, weighing in at how much alcohol? 12.5% alcohol. Let's give this one a wall. It smells gentle, ever so slightly leafy, a little bit of baked character. It smells to me like um, a slightly basic Bordeaux from a reasonable vintage. Uh, I don't know whether that's a compliment or not, but um, um, the, 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 I think a wine like this about 15 years ago, probably 20 years ago, would have a, have a, a lot more uh, over gawkiness. It'd be greener and there'd be some very ripe berry in there, but there'd also be some uh, weird celery-like things. Here it feels like they've got, um, and also it'd probably be Cabernet Merlot rather than Merlot Cabernet. Um, it, it, smells, uh, it smells okay. Not really, but okay. A little bit of leafiness when you come to taste it. Also feels, I don't know whether there's a slight spritz to it, but um, there's, there's a greenness in there. It's slightly hollow. Um, I, um, it's not, it's not great wine. Um, it's, I had their, their Pinot Noir the other day, uh, for, which is in this same range, and it was so much better than this. This is, this feels just like a, a bit, a bit sort of like, huh. Um, fresh enough, ripe enough, but it feels like somebody's, um, it feels a bit dilute. It's, it's okay, but not jumping up and down. Uh, second wine, Tussock Jumper. Um, it, it sounds like a, you Tussock Jumper, it sounds like a bit of an insult. But there is a penguin with a, a I don't know if, they, if a Tussock is a type of penguin, but anyway, Tussock Jumper, Cabernet Sauvignon. Tussock Jumper's a range that I think it comes from different parts of the world, but this particular one uh, comes from San Juan. Uh, in Argentina, uh, 2013 Cabernet Sauvignon, so middle world. It's almost a, a slight fizzy cola-like smell to it. Um, there's a little bit of um, red berry, a little bit of um, other, yeah, maybe red currant in there. But um, yes, it's this uh, strange cola-like character. And um, let's see what it tastes like. Honest, simple, ever, and I would say it's slightly fizzy. I don't know whether that's to um, it's got some carbon dioxide in to try and keep it a little bit fresh. Uh, the fruit in there is a bit baked. I find that with a lot of uh, uh, reds from San Juan. It's, uh, it's a bit above Mendoza. I think it's a bit above Mendoza. And um, the wines, I, there aren't many of them I've been all that impressed by. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I prefer it to the, uh, uh, to the villa. Uh, but um, it's got some of the rightness that the villa lacks. Uh, and the villa's got some of the fragrance that this lacks. Maybe I shall try it. I'll dig a little drop in there of the villa and just see uh, whether I get something that is greater than the sum of the parts. That works really rather nicely. Yeah. It fleshes out the um, villa um, or it gives fragrance to the tussock jumper, whichever way you want to look at it. But, um, uh, so maybe you need to buy a bottle of each and do your own blend. Let's see whether they've got the blend right on wine number three, which is Wakefield Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from the Clare Valley, 2012 vintage of their eye. Whoops, there it goes, pop. There's that deep, earthy, slightly minty character that I often get in, uh, uh, in Clare Cabernets. And it uh, feels like it's going to have some freshness, uh, really pure black currant fruit. Uh, but with this, yeah, this, uh, this warm earth character, uh, not quite Spanish warm, dusty earth. Here is, it, it feels like there's still a little bit of moisture in that earth. It's a little bit too precise, but uh, it smells, it smells like it's going to be honest, juicy wine, uh, not too big and hearty. Uh, so there's going to be a refreshing edge to it. But um, yeah, the sort of wine that uh, first um, made us fall in love with Australia. Yeah, good, rich, hearty, little bit of licorice in there, and it's, it's not really not shy on the alcohol front, 14%. But there's this blackcurrant freshness. Uh, blackcurrant and licorice, it's, it's that, uh, uh, they, they used to be some strange little sweets called licorice imps. Uh, that it reminds me a little bit of those. 
but um, juicy now. Uh, but it feels like everything is there if you want to keep hold of. Imagine if you kept hold of a bottle of that for five years, it'd still be very, very good condition. And I wouldn't be surprised if you were to. Uh, sometimes people, people dig up bottles of this and say, I've forgotten about this, I've had it 15 years. I wouldn't be surprised if something like that was looking uh, rather nice in, uh, in 10, 15 years' time. Uh, and I'm not urging you to rush out and sell it and then come and throw things at me in 10 years, but uh, um, I, you know, I just, I, if I had a, a bit of space, I might squirrel away a couple of bottles of that. Uh, let's try wine number four. Uh, so this is a Facundo from Garcia Schwader. I don't know uh, who, who, who uh, Garcia Schwader is, uh, but he uh, uh, has uh, she, he, she, I don't know, uh, has uh, put this uh, blend together and uh, from, it uh, looks from, from the label like it's got fruit from Itata, uh, Loka Miller and Lowell, uh, which are those uh, bits, oh god, are they Maule or Cachapoil? Um, anyway, somewhere down, uh, down, down in, uh, uh, bits of chilli that, uh, that um, are underrated or undervalued and have been slightly over milked in the past. Uh, blend here, elegance of Cabernet, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the uh, Leva La Fuerza, I don't know what that means, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, so elegance of Cabernet Franc, uh, Jovialidad del Carignan, the jollity of Carignan, I don't think Carignan has been jolly, uh, y la locura uh, del Petit Verde, so that's the blend, let's see how it, uh, he stroke she has managed in putting it all together. And it's looking pretty good. Um, it's got some of the classic blackcurrant parcel of, uh, of chilli, but not so much that it's gone into that uh, slightly uh, caricature where it feels like they, you just want to think, hey, I don't know what grape this is, but it just smells of chilli. Uh, behind it, it's got uh, uh, little bits of warmth and uh, uh, dustiness, sandiness, and uh, a little bit of uh, a more exotic characters, things like uh, maybe uh, even on the ginger side, I don't know where that, that character's come from, a bit of spice in there. Uh, maybe that's the Carignan talking, the jollity of the Carignan uh, coming through. Um, I, I imagine it's going to be quite a full throaty wine, I'm not sure what uh, alcohol is, but 14%, so same as the previous one. Uh, but it feels like it's, it's maybe going to be a little bit more um, rounded. Uh, it's a year older, uh, it feels like it's going to be fleshier. Big firm tannins from uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon. The, some, then some of the other ones are adding more dainty uh, aromatic edges. So there's a, I think there's a little bit of volatility in there, which I, I don't mind. Um, and, and there's a juiciness about it, and, and the, as I was saying, this uh, ginger, uh, almost exotic uh, orange peel type of spices. Um, then a problem for me that I find in quite a lot of Chilean wine comes in is slight hardness on the finish. Uh, and I don't know whether it's uh, some people thinking we need to acidify here um, in order to, to keep it all fresh, but there's just something that dries out the finish here. Uh, I would almost like a little bit more generosity and juiciness. And I think if you're doing wine at 14%, I'm sort of thinking, well, where is that, that hard edge coming from? Because the grapes are gonna be uh, nice and fleshy and ripe. It's one of those I sort of go, I nearly like it. I like a lot of the flavours, but just that little bit that's, uh, that I'm left with um, when I've uh, swallowed or spat it out. Um, hey. It's good, uh, and, but I actually prefer the Wakefield. Hey. Uh, wine at number five. We're back with Australia, and we're on Australia for the last, uh, last three. So this is De Bortoli's DB Reserve. Cabernet Sauvignon Vintage 2010. Uh, I don't know whereabouts in southeastern Australia it's from, but um, let's just give it a whirl. And this is too minty for me. I stick my nose in there and it's that minty eucalyptus. Um, very intense, uh, very, it's a caricature. Um, and um, in the way that I was talking about, uh, that there are some Chilean wines where you smell them and you think, oh, it's, it's a bit too much. Here, this is, it's a bit too much. Yes, there is some, uh, black currant and blackberry fruit behind uh, the mint, but um, it's that mint that's just in your, in your face too much. Yeah, and when you taste it, it's that character that really comes through too strongly. Um, Thirteen and a half percent alcohol. Um, it feels it's strange. It feels a bit lighter than that. Um, out of the finish, I'm left with is a bit almost dilute, and um, with that mintiness, with a little drying edge of oak to. Uh, uh, to add in there as well. It's it's not a style I like. 
Um, so sorry, the water there. I like a lot of your wines, but not that one. Hey, um, next one, we're back with Wakefield. So it's the um, slightly one level up Cabernet. I think they're a level above this, St Andrew's Cabernet. Uh, but this is the uh, uh, Jaraman, Yaraman, um, it's uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Clare Valley, and Coonawara. Uh, and it's vintage 2010. I don't know whether it's a 50 50, but. Um, it's um, priced as a step up from the, the basic Cabernet, uh, but uh, yeah, as I say, this is St Andrew's one that uh, is uh, priced as a step up from this. And this is where the Australian mint works. The previous one, there was a mint and not enough behind. Here, there is that mint leaf eucalyptus, uh, but it feels like the weight, there's a weight of fruit behind it, which is just going to carry it and um, it makes it, it it's, it's, a, it's a yeah it's a, it's a second uh, a secondary player it's second fiddle rather than the uh, uh, it's not the lead guitarist it's there in the background keeping a little bit of rhythm uh, you'd know it, it, the wine would be worse for it if it wasn't there uh, but it's not center stage and that's rather nice um, it's, it's a complete confident wine um, it's got um, I mean the Clare Valley component I, you, uh, I tasted it in the uh, uh, in the basic Wakefield, it's got that uh, yeah the um, the little bit of the black currant with that uh, that menthol edge in there, the earthiness as well. Here, Kunawara for me has maybe got a little bit more silkiness about it. Um, it's got a little bit of oak in there, and I find have a criticism maybe you know I was talking about acidification on the uh, fecundo. I've got a feeling that, that maybe they've done a little bit there, so the finish is ever so slightly hard. But in general, the fruit is just so lush and lovely and not simple, uh, that's what I like about it, it's like flavours flit in and out um, and um, I was talking about the, the, uh, the basic Wakefield as being a wine I'd put money on for the long run, uh, this I'd certainly put money on for 10-15 uh, years but it's nice now, um, it's, um, I mean it, it, it could certainly do with a, a slosh round a, a decanter to, uh, to come out of its shell but as it, as it is now it looks, it looks pretty smart and uh, so I'm going to uh, not pour that way, I'm going to have a Little, little slug. Yeah, there's a little bit of toast in the throat there, but again, not domin dominating. All those bit part players, the oak, the mint, the earthiness, they're, 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 they're letting the, pushing the main event, the lovely fruit to the fore and just saying, go on, you, you, you do your bit and we'll support you, we'll be there if you uh, need a little bit of propping up. Very nice it is too. Final wine, uh, this is Hastewell and Lightfoot. Uh, McLaren Vale Cabinet Front, uh, 2009. Let's try this. And we're back to mintiness, eucalyptus. Um, uh, as and, as, uh, as you probably gathered, it's uh, if there those are the things that are to the fore, uh, then it, I, I would actually prefer other things to be the, to the fore. Um, I'll I'll reserve judgment until I taste it. It feels like there is a an okay wine behind, but um, mm, hey. And that's got what I call skinny tannins, so grape skins. It's where the, as if the grapes are slightly shriveled. Um, and um, uh, so instead of getting uh, relaxed, gentle, juicy fruit, as I was getting on the previous one, it feels like, um, yeah, there's, there's a baked character here. Some things have been picked when uh, the, yeah, the fruit started to shrivel on the vine. Um, I miss the, uh, the allure, the fragrant allure of uh, Cabernet Franc and um, it's okay um, and um, it's quite nice hearty stuff but um, I don't, and also I don't, when I taste it I don't notice the mint character quite as much as, as when I smelt it but um, yeah that I'm, I'll, I'll be interested to see whether that comes out of its shell uh, as it is at the moment, it looks a little bit um, stubborn, um, and uh, as if it's one of those that's, uh, that, that, that's like, it's just going to fold, fold its arm and not going to move all that much. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, because uh, I do like Cabernet Franc, but uh, this one doesn't uh, quite hit the right buttons. Uh, the stars for me here, I mean the two Wakefield wines for me yeah, do stand out quite a bit. I, I'll be interested to see how what happens to the Fagundo as well, whether that um, uh, does get past that edge of um, that slightly hard finish that I get. Um, and so I'm tasting on a slightly chilly day here and it may just be that they, uh, with a little bit more time in a warmer room, uh, they uh, come out of their shell. I will report back, but um, for the moment, Wakefield, it's easy.